Hey guys, it's Kwaku from SeekTheGreatness.com, a channel that's all about applied self-investment. Welcome to day seven of our copy challenge breakdown. So we're on day seven, and today is a very, very famous ad. This is the the famous Rose Voice ad by David Ogilvy. Another classic ad. Um, uh, we're gonna break it down. I'm not really into the classic ads because I feel like they don't translate in terms of how you write today, but this is a winning ad for a reason. And the reason why this ad was so good was because of the benefits. It's just benefit upon benefit upon benefit. So let's go ahead and break that down right now. But as always, before we start to break down, please join the Copywriting Hacks group and the Black Copywriter Coalition. I'll put the links in the description uh, for you to check it out. But now let's get started. Let's go with the breakdown. So as always, we are going to look at the four headlines. So let's Move on to my breakdown document so that you can see. Let me zoom in so you guys can see. Okay, so 60 day copywriting breakdown. The four U's, we're going to look at whether if the headline is urgent, useful, unique, and ultra specific. So let's look at the headline. And the headline says at 60 miles an hour, the loudest noise in this news rose voice comes from the electric clock. That's the headline. I don't know why I was doing that in the British accent, but that is the headline. At 60 miles an hour, the loudest noise in this new rose voice comes from the electric clock. So now let's break it down with the four U's. So is this headline urgent? I say it's urgent because this creates some level of importance to people interested in Rolls Royce. So I'd give it a two out of four. It's just the fact that it says the new Rolls Royce, you know, so, uh, so yeah, it's kind of urgent. So for people that were thinking about buying a new Rolls Royce or interested in it, uh, I'd say it's urgent in that front. Is the headline useful? Okay. I said the headline shows how Rolls Royce like creates for uh, a nice, uh, quiet driving experience. Uh, so at 60 miles an hour, the loudest noise in this news in this new Rolls Royce comes from the electric clock. That's kind of useful for anyone who wants a nice driving experience, who wants a quality driving experience, you know, wants to be cool, wants to have a serene background. That That's useful. That's useful to you. And, and then I say it's unique, and then it asks, is this unique? It's unique because of how the car operates, right? The headline is telling you, at 60 miles an hour, the loudest noise this Rolls, Rolls Royce, uh, the loudest noise in, the, in this Rolls Royce is from, the, is from the electric clock. Yes. So that's kind of unique as well. Is it ultra specific? I'd say it's super specific because, again, it's a Rolls Royce, uh, once it's driving at 60 miles per hour, it's so quiet, you hear the electric clock. So it's kind of a very ultra specific driving experience um, in in regards to Rolls Royce. So rule of one, then we move on to the rule of one. The focal point is related to the headline. So yes, the headline is very, very focused on one thing about your driving experience. And then when you go into the ad, it just moves from there. What makes Rolls Royce the best car in the world? There is really no magic about it. It is merely patient attention to detail. And then when it starts at one, at 60 miles an hour, the loudest noise comes from the electric clock. So yes, uh, the focal point is very central. It's very, um, it's not all over the place. So one sent and then one sentence summary, if you could summarize the big idea of this, of this ad, right? That it's, the attention to detail is what makes the Rolls Royce. The attention to detail, and then, and uh, so that's the whole big idea behind this ad. And awareness is the approach of the copy direct or indirect? I say it's definitely direct because the readers are definitely aware of Rolls Royce, their their position and their positioning and their brand, their and. There are readers out there who are looking for more quality, high-end vehicles to drive uh, in that sense. You know, so people want better driving experiences. People always want to drive the best cars to impress pe people and all of that stuff. So I'd, I'd say it's very direct. What lead is being used? It's definitely the proclam proclamation lead. This thing is making a, a, prom a big promise. This ad is making a big promise, right? It's making 
some kind of claim. At 60 miles an hour, the loudest noise in this new Rolls Royce comes from the electric clock. And then it even goes on to say, what makes Rolls Royce the best car in the world? So this so this ad, right, is, is coming in, balls to the wall, making a big promise. So definitely a proclamation right there. So since they've made a big claim, can they back it up? So let's go on to the problem agitate solution. So problem is a problem that your product uh, service solves easily identified. So I said yes, because the ad talks about how easy it is to drive and park. So one of the examples that I, I, I got from the ad was the Rolls Royce is designed as an owner driven car. It is 18 inches shorter than the, it is 18 inches shorter than the, than the largest domestic cars. The car has power steering, power brakes, and automatic gear shift. It is very easy to drive and to park. No chauffeur required. So, um, so that's one of the problems. I like people don't want to drive cars that are hard to handle. You know, so it's telling you that it's very very easy. Uh, let's move on to agitate. Does the copy poke at the reader's pain points? I, I, I said not really. The copy because the copy focuses on benefit upon benefit. But um, if, if the closest thing to agitating is like, it was a very, very subtle pain point. And then it goes on to say, there are three separate systems of power brakes, two hydraulic and one mechanical. Damage to one system will not affect the others. So you know how like when you take your car to the mechanic to fix one thing, they, then they go on to tell you this and then this is also messed up. Like nobody wants to deal with that. So. In the sense, the copy is telling you that won't happen if you probably had a Rolls Royce. You wouldn't have to deal with like taking your car to a mechanic, and then there's a problem with this car, with with this part and that part. Uh, so yeah, very very specific. Solution: Does the copy identify clearly that there is a solution to the reader's problem and that you are the person capable of handling of helping them solve that problem? So yes, there are a lot of solutions. Uh, and it comes from a perspective of credibility and proof. So one example is the finished car. The finished car spends a week in the final test shop being fine-tuned. Here it is subjected to 98 separate ordeals. For example, the engineers use a stethoscope to listen for axle wind. So they're showing you how, um, like, like how much detail and how much they test the cars to show that um, like they know what they're talking about. And also one example is also right here. At 60 miles an hour, the loudest noise comes from the electric clock, reports the technical editor of the motor. So that shows credibility as well. So the writer did his research and was talking to engineers, technical experts, and they definitely found a lot of information about this car. So this means the reader won't have to worry about callbacks or expect too many, or expect too many problems with owning the car. So let's move on to the next uh, part of the checklist. Does your headline grab the reader by the eyeballs? I say, yeah, definitely, because of the very, very specific details. At 60 miles per hour, the, the only thing you hear is the electric clock, right? So we did design that. Uh, we definitely established that. Does it still curiosity? Because yes, you want to know how the car is able to be so quiet. You're telling me at 60 miles per hour, right? The only thing I'm going to hear is the electric clock. Yeah, I want to know how. Like, it does stoke, uh, stoke some curiosity. Okay. Is there a big promise? There is a subtle promise of an enjoyable driving experience. Because if, if you're telling me that I'm driving a car at 60 miles per hour, and the only thing I'm going to hear is the electric clock, yeah, that tells me that this car is very, very quiet. So it's like, oh, okay, like, nice drive, like, this is like a very, very cool car, unique and all that stuff. So moving on to the next point, does the lead expand on the headline? Um, yes, again, at 60 miles an hour, the loudest noise comes from the electric clock. So this is, um, does the opening reinforce the promised benefit? Yes, there is a promise of an enjoyable driving experience, right? You, that you're gonna be driving the best car in the world. Does the opening continue to arouse curiosity in the reader? Like I said, yes, you want to know how the car is able to stay so quiet. Does the copy establish credibility? Is the copy believable? 
Yes, they provide numerous details about how the car performs so quietly from credible sources. So it tells you three mufflers tune out sound fre uh, frequencies, sound frequencies acoustically. So remember when they said the only thing you hear is the electric clock, then they, and later in the copy, it tells you three mufflers tune out sound frequencies. And you see it right here. Um, three mufflers tune out sound frequencies. So that's how, like, it's right there. They already prove it to you right after the, the headline. What does a copy do to prove to the reader that you're a credible person of authority who should be paid attention to? So the, the writer like references an interview that he had with a technical engineer from the motor. So the engineer went on to say, the, the technical like engineer or reporter went on to say, at 60 miles an hour, the loudest noise comes from the electric clock, reports the technical editor of the motor. So that's your credibility right there. Does the copy offer a bribe? Is there a bribe in place to convince the reader what they must read on? I mean, and, and it's right there, what it says, what makes Rolls Royce the best car in the world? You know, that's kind of like a claim, but it's also like curiosity. Like, don't, don't you want to know what makes the best car in the world? So in a sense, I figured that is the bribe. All right, so moving on. Now we're moving on to the offer. Um, is the offer promise new? Like, yes, a very quiet car and claims to you, and, it's, and it also claims that you'll be driving the best car in the world. Is the offer promise unique? Yes, you are driving a car that's very quiet at 60 miles per hour to create an enjoyable driving experience, right? So that's, that's what it is. Is the offer promise safe to invest in? So yes, it's because it's from Rolls Royce, right? So there's a lot of credibility and high positioning of the product it's you know they they've created great products so any customer that's going to invest in it is doing so safely because of rolls royce uh like their credibility and their positioning in the market everyone knows what is very aware of rolls royce is the offer promise easy to use implement yeah it is it's a simple magazine ad and it tells you how to get it so we'll keep moving Moving on, is the offer promise simple to use and implement? Yes, simple, straightforward at the simple, straightforward offer at the end. Is the offer promise fast to deliver results? Yes, it gets an you get an excellent car that's engineered to perfection and has all of these benefits, right? Is the offer promise providing results that are predictable? Yes, money for the best car in the world. Is the offer promise providing something big? Yes, you're driving a car that's very quiet and again, claims to be the best car in the world. So let's look at the eight useful components hidden in your copy. Does the copy provide proof of every promising claim made? Yeah. So if you just go on to the, like, the copyright, it's just benefit upon benefit because he even has them listed out. Like 60 miles per hour, you know, you only hear the clock. Every Rolls Royce engine is run for seven hours at full throttle before installation. The Rolls Royce is designed as an owner-driven car. It is 18 inches shorter than the, large, than the largest domestic cars. The car has power steering, power brakes, automatic gear shift. Uh, like, and look at this one. A picnic table veneered in French walnut slides out from under the dash. Two more swing out behind the front seats. You can get such optional extras as an espresso coffee-making <laughs> machine, a dictating machine. <laughs> a bed, hot and cold water for washing, an electric razor or a telephone. Like what? That is wild. This is this is this is March 1959. You can get all oh, this installed in your car <laughs> for a Rolls Royce. That is wild. That actually kind of like impressed me. So yeah, so like it's it's crazy. So the, it does provide a lot of like promises, and it makes a lot of claims with the credibility and all the things that the, how the car was tested and what you get when you um, when you order the car. So does the copy use picture words to provide a snapshot of the reader in the future, benefiting from having bought and used your product or service? So yes, you know the image of having car with added benefits. I said earlier there was a, like a picnic table veneered in French walnut slides out from under the dash two more swing out behind the front seats. So you can pull out the picnic table from the car. 
And then they go to, then they also go on to tell you, you get all this other stuff, like if you want it added. So it creates the picture of like, think of it, you're driving this car and you're driving with your, your partner, right? And you're, you're driving your partner in this like beautiful, um, nice Rolls Royce. Then all of a sudden you can pull out a picnic table. It's very romantic, right? So you like, this person is driving the car. Oh man, I'll be able to impress my date with this like impressive car and I'll, and then like she'll see he or she will see that I've you know slid out this picnic table they'll, they'll love it and they'll think I'm so cool for owning this car so that is the picture in your head but when you're thinking about owning this um uh Rolls Royce right so that is the picture that you want to create this type of picture you want to uh have this person start to imagine themselves of how they could use this product so can you identify exactly when the offer is being made? Yeah, so I'll show you right here. The Rolls Royce illustrated in this ad advertisement, FOB, ports of role, ports of entry, cost $13,995. So it's about $14,000. Uh, does the copy reduce risk to the reader? Not really. They don't say like, oh, buy this car, you get a 30 day. It's a Rolls Royce, right? Like. They're they're that they're that confident that they don't even need to address the the whole like risk guarantee type of bullshit. Like as I said, it's a Rolls Royce has they're very very confident in their products. They have a lot of positioning, and I didn't really see that in in the copy. Like if you are having a problem with the car, you just take it to the the dealership and they fix it for you, right? Either for free or something like that. But they didn't really cover that. So. Is the call to action is the call to action asking for the sale clear and concise? Yes. So it goes on to say, if you would like the re if you would like the rewarding experience of driving the Rolls Royce or Bentley, write or telephone to one of the dealers listed on the opposite page. Does the copy summarize the offer towards the end? No, it doesn't need to. It's pretty straightforward. Like it's all there. If you would like the Rolls Royce, it costs fourteen thousand dollars. If you would like it, write or telephone us. You know. It's up to you. We don't care. We're fucking Rolls Royce. Like, our, our car has a fucking, what do you call it? This car comes with a bed, a coffee making machine, a dictating machine, a bed, <laughs> an electric razor. Listen, this is March 1959. So no wonder this ad killed it, man. This, like, I can, I can see why. I can see why David Ogilvy knew his shit. And it was all about so the biggest takeaway from this ad was about knowing the product extensively, getting the quoting people, experts, you know, like getting testimonies, not testimonies, but quoting, getting credibility from the experts, and then pointing the pointing, painting the picture in the in the reader's mind of how they would use the car, and it's just benefit upon benefit upon benefit. Okay, so they definitely proved why this is the best car in the world. For like a car in nineteen March nineteen fifty nine, right? You <laughs> that uh, you can pull out a picnic table. You could also get installed a coffee making machine, a bed, hot cold water. Like that's just insane. And the fact that they tested, uh, they they put the car through ninety eight separate tests. So yeah, this 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 is why this is a winning ad. And through this breakdown. You learn the importance of knowing your product and putting painting and just adding benefit upon benefit and painting the picture in the person's mind. So, yeah, that's everything from this breakdown. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe so you know we can reach more people who are into copywriting and want to do their breakdowns and stuff like that. And also, don't forget to subscribe. I mean, to check the description and join the copywriting hacks, how to write copy and influence people. And also, if you're a black copywriter, make sure you also join the Black Copywriter Coalition. But that's it. This is Kweku. I love you all. And remember to seek the greatness within you. Peace.